So let's start. The first tank on the list is the German uh, Gefahrtsfeld Versatz Tracker of one slash two. Uh, this was a prototype tank destroyer from the 1970s. Um, the main problem with this tank is simple. It has two guns mounted near the tank's hull. Now, if you know anything about anti-tank warfare, especially in the 70s, any anti-tank missile or even a standard RPG-2 slash RPG-7 could easily pierce the side armor of this tank. So if this vehicle was hit from the side by, say, an, an RPG-7 or an AT-3 Shagger anti-tank missile, it would pretty much disable whichever gun is on that side. So if it gets hit on the left side, the left, gun, the left uh, main gun would be disabled, or if it was struck on the right side, the right gun would be disabled. Tanks like this, or tank destroyers, or self-propelled guns like this, were pretty outdated by the time the 1970s came around. And you know, World War II was really the last of conflict in which turretless self-propelled guns were really useful. So that's the only reason why this tank is at number 10. So yeah, this tank, it, it's not really a bad design. It's just severely outdated for the time period for which it was uh, developed. The next tank is the American Chrysler VT-8. The Chrysler VT-8 was an amphibious uh, nuclear-powered medium tank from 1950s, or, the, or designed between 1950 and 1956. The problem with this tank is pretty obvious. I mean, it was a nuclear-powered tank. It was, it was supposed to be fitted with a miniature nuclear reactor. Similar to, similar to what you would see on a, a nuclear submarine. Um, at this time period, in the 1950s, tanks had a high attrition rate. You know, for example, during the Korean War, you had something like the three to 6,000 tanks destroyed. Now imagine if those tanks were all fitted with, you know, nuclear reactors. You would have a massive amount of nuclear fallout. Outside of that, this tank was pretty advanced for its time, which is why it's at number nine. It was pretty useful. It, it would have been useful if it had, didn't have a nuclear reactor as its main power plant. So yeah, that's the only reason this tank is um, at number nine. It's, it's a cool looking tank, like literally. Like I wouldn't mind if I lived, if I was a soldier in the 50s, I wouldn't mind uh, if I was a tanker in the 50s, I wouldn't mind um, um, having the pilot one of these, just the nuclear reactor is a huge turn off. Next tank is the Russian Tsar tank, uh, also known as the uh, Libidinko tank, or Libid I, I can't pronounce the name. Um, this was a prototype uh, or experimental heavy wheel tank from 1914, 1915. It was designed at the same time as the um, British Mark I and the French um, fraught lofty uh, landship prototype tanks. Um, the problem with this tank is pretty obvious. I mean, it's, it's basically just a giant tricycle with two uh, guns mounted on the side. That's really it. This tank performed horribly during tests. And yeah, by 1916, the Russian Empire j just decided to abandon their tank prototype, their tank program, pretty much uh, completely. Um, the Russians during World War I mostly relied on armored cars and, um, and armored trucks as their main infantry fighting vehicles rather than um, tanks. Um, this tank was eventually scrapped in 1923 at the end of the, um, the Russian Civil War, so yeah. This is pretty much one of the worst uh, Russian tanks ever designed. And I mean, it's, the, by 1915, slash 1916, 1917, the Germans had already learned how to use their 77 millimeter um, field artillery pieces as cheap anti-armor weapons. So yeah, this tank would have been a giant um, slow moving target for any German um, anti-tank crews. Uh, operating in 1916 to 1918. So yeah, this tank was pretty useful, useless. 
The next tank on the list is the Soviet NI tank. Also known as the Odessa tank. The NI tank were, was a series of improvised uh, tanks. Uh, they weren't really improvised. They were designed by an actual Soviet arsenal as, as last ditch tanks during the German invasion of Russia, also known as Operation Barbarossa in 1941. Uh, only 69 of these tanks were built. The main problem with this tank, or this series of tanks, is that they never had a standard issued. Um, they didn't have. Really, they, they, they didn't. They didn't really have standard um, issued guns. They were fitted with whatever the Russians could find. Some tanks were fitted with um, 7.62 millimeter machine guns. Some were fitted with 45 millimeter K20 um, uh, light guns. Some were fitted with anti tank rifles. So uh, these tanks had. Um, uh, lackluster armor, they're pretty slow, and they're basically just live targets really for any German anti-tank crews or, or any German tank uh, fitted with a gun larger than uh, 7.92 millimeter. So yeah, this this is um, one of the worst last ditch tanks made by the Russian or the Soviet military in the Second World War. Okay, um, the next tank is the New Zealand Bob Simple Tank. The Bob Simple Tank was a New Zealand uh, infantry support tank designed in 1940-1941 uh, during a time period where uh, the Japanese Empire or the Japanese military was expanding throughout the Pacific. Um, New Zealand didn't have a lot of tanks. In fact, the only tank they really had was the um, the um, Carden Lloyd carrier um, tank it, and the um, the Brin gun converted the, the Brin gun carrier converted to um, a self-propelled gun armed with a 40 millimeter two pounder gun. Um, the Bob Simple tank is like literally um, is literally the one of the worst tanks ever designed in Asia, you know, or in the Pacific. You know. um, I don't think there's any tank designed in, from that region that's worse than this. This tank was made out of corrugated iron, and it was built on the, um, the you know, chassis of an agricultural tractor. So, um, yeah, like this, I mean, just look at it. I mean... Obviously, this thing would have got smacked if it would have came into contact with a Japanese. Um, the next tank on the list is, the, I would say, the worst French tank ever designed. This is the Saint. This is the Saint Shimon M1921. It was a wheeled come tank. It designed between 1919 and 1921. This was literally the most pointless French tank ever designed. I don't know what the French were thinking when they designed this vehicle. The main problem with this vehicle is it it's only armed with a, an, a, an eight millimeter machine gun. It's, it's mounted in what looks like the front of the tank. This tank was pretty slow for a tank it. Most tank it's at this time could, could uh, move at a speed of at least 25 to upwards to 40 miles per hour. And yet, this tank it could only move at 17 miles per hour. The tank did this tank it didn't, um, or this tank didn't sell very well at all. The only country that purchased this was Japan. Japan purchased a few prototypes, and China purchased a few prototypes as well. And that was it. Uh, these tanks weren't used in World War II at all, so uh, most likely they were probably scrapped. Uh, either by the Germans or the Vichy French government uh, during the Second World War because I can't find any image of this tank in a museum anywhere around the world. So I'm pretty sure the French probably didn't have a use for this tank. Neither did the occupying German army. So this tank was just literally useless. I mean, just look at it. There's nothing you could do with this tank or slash tank it. 
Um, the next tank is literally the worst British tank ever designed in British military history. And it is the, it is the Leo Villa tank from 1940. This tank, if you can really call it that, I mean it's listed as a tank, so I'm just going to call it a tank. It's a, is it um, it's, it's a, it's an improvised armored tractor tank that was designed for the British Home Guard. Now this vehicle, this tank was designed during the um, um, proposed German invasion of Britain, you know, also known as the Battle of Britain, which never happened because the British Air Force managed to hold off the German Luftwaffe, you know. So, yeah, this tank was pretty, you know, useless. I mean, there, there, there's nothing the, the British would have been able to do with this tank at all. Um, if the Germans had actually been able to invade Britain, I mean, even a Panzer II with his 20 millimeter auto cannon could defeat this tank. Um, the main armor. The next tank on the list is the German Kugel Panzer. The Kugel Panzer was a experimental light rolling reconnaissance tank from 1945. Um, this tank actually looks really cool for its time period. The only problem is, its main armament was supposed to be two 7.92 millimeter, millimeter machine guns, and it only had an armor thickness of 5 millimeters. This tank was severely slow. I mean, I mean, it only had a speed of roughly 5 miles per hour, so it was only as fast as a World War I um, British Mark I tank. Um, let's just be honest, if this tank had actually entered service, it would have gotten ass raped, literally. Like, there's, there's nothing, I mean, by 1945, light reconnaissance tanks were armed with only machine guns were pretty useless. This tank would have had to go up against, you know, uh, Soviet uh, T-40 slash T-60 tanks, or light tanks armed with um, either... 20 or uh, or 40 millimeter uh, cannons, and on the Western Front, this Kugel Panzer would have had to go up against M3 Stewarts and M5 Stewart light tanks armed with 37 millimeter anti-tank guns. So this this five millimeters of armor was pretty useless. Not to mention the crap ton of bazookas that the Americans and the British and Canadian forces were um, issuing on their front. The next tank is the worst Italian tank, and that's the Ansando Mias from 1935. The Mias was a miniature man-powered tank it, prototype tank it from 1935. Um, if you thought the Italian L33 light tank was useless, or tank it was useless, this is even more useless than that. This tank has no engine, meaning it's powered by your body. So it can only move as fast as you can. This is literally the laziest Italian uh, weapon ever. If you thought the Breeder machine gun was bad, or the, the Breeder machine gun was like the worst of the Italian infantry weapons ever designed. This is like the worst Italian vehicle designed for war ever designed. Um, this vehicle was obviously never adapted. I'm pretty sure the Italian soldiers that saw this thing probably laughed at it. Um, yeah, this is just, it had no engine. So, you know, on the modern battlefield, even in the 1930s and 40s, having a tank with no engine was literally the worst you could get in terms of um, tank development. And finally, the number one tank is literally the laziest tank design ever. The dumbest, but the laziest. I mean, it's cool looking, but it's still the laziest. And that's the Soviet uh, Azora plant point tank uh, from 1939. Um, this was literally uh, a non self propelled machine gun nest. It was designed during the Soviet uh, winter war with Finland in 1939. Uh, these tanks, uh, if you can really even call them that, 
they had to be towed by other vehicles, so, you know, like armored cars or um, other light tanks. Uh, some sources state that these vehicles were sometimes towed by mules or horses, and they were pretty much made to supplement the staggering losses of Soviet uh, light tanks and armored cars due to Finnish anti-tank weapons in the um, in the Winter War. You know, for example, the um, Lati um, anti-tank rifle, the 20 millimeter. Um, yeah, this is like like this is Zora tank is literally the laziest you could ever get in terms of um, tank development. I mean. Whoever designed this probably only took like five minutes to um, put this together. They probably just, they probably just sketched the um, basic outline and, and basic blueprints and just sent this off to whatever factory, or what sent this off to the Azura factory, which is the actual name of the plant that produced it. You know, um, not that many of these vehicles, um, if you can really call them that, of these tanks really survive. Uh, most of them can be found in some Soviet uh, war or Soviet uh, or Russian uh, war museums throughout Russia. But outside of Russia and Finland, you can't really find any info on these vehicles. Um, yeah, if whatever tank you had in your head as the worst tank that you ever saw, you know these tanks on this list make whatever that tank was look like. A fucking tiger tank by comparison you know so yeah if you guys have any more ideas for a top 10 um, weapons list please put them in the comments section until next time this was J-Man time signing off